In this video, I would like to introduce a topic not widely researched in Egyptian monuments, the detection of persistent acoustic signatures around and within these structures, specifically of infrasonic sound. Human hearing is generally sensitive between the sound frequencies of around 20 cycles per second up to more than 17,000 cycles per second. Sounds that are lower in frequency than we can hear are classified as subsonic or infrasonic. These frequencies can be felt, however, and can also physically affect our bodies and brains. Infrasonic sound at very high decibel levels, even though we cannot hear it, can actually have significant effects on our bodies and perceptions. This is the central principle of some of the new non-lethal military applications of infrasound projectors for everything from crowd control to incapacitating enemy troops. We reference a study performed by Liz Cooper, MA, MSC, with the British Academy of Sound and the British Association for the Advancement of Science. I have placed a link to the paper in the description below. Quote, the frequency response of the human brain is of particular interest, as it is around 15 cycles per second in most individuals. Exposure to infrasonic sound at certain frequencies and levels can cause a variety of reactions in human subjects. Nausea, anxiety, paranoia, awe, or even a sense of dread. In more sensitive individuals, this can lead to a sense of disconnection with the material world. End quote. The British study gathered data from test subjects who were exposed to low amplitude infrasound within the range of 6 to 15 cycles per second and then were asked to complete a short questionnaire regarding their reactions or impressions. Here we see two pages from the study of the subject responses which have been collated. The key for this section relates one asterisk as statistically significant, two as highly significant, and three as extremely significant. I have highlighted the responses relevant to the hypothesis I am presenting in red. I gained insightful knowledge that was attained at an intuitive level. The experience cannot be described adequately in words. I lost my usual sense of time. I lost my usual sense of space. My muscles felt relaxed. Physical tension drained from my body. Now let's take a look at some of the infrasound data I recorded in the field on my last visit to Egypt. My instrumentation was simple. I installed an app on my phone that utilizes the built-in accelerometer function to detect infrasonic vibrations and displays the results as a real-time graph of frequency and decibel level. My method was to collect audio samples by setting the phone on the original pavement, wall, or foundation features of the temples and monuments we visited so that the accelerometer could couple with a solid surface and then initiate the capture mode and record the readout with a second phone. The detector was never handled or touched while sampling. Frequency is indicated in the large red bar in the center of the display and the amplitude or level is shown as a graph trace in a green line at the display bottom. The sampling location results showed a few very interesting commonalities. Sampling conducted inside the temples and monument precincts at columns, in chambers, on altars, statues, paving stones, and other interior features, with only one exception, yielded zero results with no indication of the presence of infrasound. The following sample was recorded at Karnak, just at the portal of the outer pylons and to the left of the main gate. The next data sample was collected inside Karnak as well at the Hatshepsut's obelisk, the only one of the pair still standing, 
at its base on the right side. At the Abydos Temple of Seti I, we sampled both of the ancient fountain wells around the perimeter foundations. At the Dendera Temple of Hathor, we collected our sample at the gate to the inside of the temple on the left-hand side, just inside this gate. And also at the Edfu Inner Temple enclosure, where the gates admit to the central hall on the left and the right. At the temple of Kam Ambo, we collected our sample just to the left-hand side of the main central column at the entrance. At the temple of Philae, our first sample was taken at the entrance uh, through the outer pylon. One of the more interesting samples collected was at Saqqara, in one of the so-called healing chambers, situated on the east side of the open area flanking the Steppe Pyramid of Zoser. Not only was this infrasound signal of a very high amplitude, but a separate microphone system recorded the presence of a low-frequency hum which was present only inside the chamber. Here we see an acoustic graph of the collected sample done by spectrum analysis. The primary frequency lies between 25 and 60 cycles per second, with a notable sharp spike into audibility at precisely 40 cycles. The following sound recording of the chamber hum has had the pitch raised 400% so that it can be easily heard on computers or phones. The conclusions of this study are still being defined but it seems evident that infrasound signatures do indeed exist at many of the ancient temples and monuments in Egypt, although generally only at the entrances and foundation perimeters of the structures, and nowhere inside them, at least at levels we were able to detect. Did the planners and builders of these structures engineer and incorporate this effect into the fabric of the buildings? And if so, was it intended to induce a certain frame of consciousness into the sensoriums of those passing through the portals, or could it have been intended to channel energies along certain paths for other uses? Or could this be an example of ancient technological vertical integration, accomplishing multiple results with a single operation? It seems that there may be some basis for a connection between these infrasound sources and the reports gathered over hundreds of years concerning certain degrees of altered consciousness experienced by explorers, sensitives, and visitors, and indeed even some modern-day tourists who visit these ancient sites and spend time there. Napoleon, for instance, was said to have spent the night in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid, but was noticeably shaken upon leaving it the next morning, and he refused to speak of his experiences there for the rest of his life. Our thesis is that these effects are not caused by magic, disembodied souls, mysterious spiritual energy, gods or ancient ghosts, but simply by the human brain's response to infrasound. Experiments and tests conducted by tourists or ad hoc researchers who have not filed official requests 
with the Antiquities Council and or paid significant special permission fees are regarded with extreme disfavor in Egypt. This is the main reason we chose smartphones as our primary data collection tools, as everyone has a phone these days, and so they are not a focus of attention or suspicion, as bulky or special purpose instruments would be. At some sites, cameras and tripods are not allowed, and at others, an extra fee must be paid to use them, and cell phones avoid this issue as well. If you've managed to watch this entire video, you're awesome. We hope you enjoyed the content and will take a moment to like, subscribe, and to click the notification bell. Thank you.